this is Doug with Inspire Light Shows. In this video, we're going to talk about installing our 3D printed mounts in Coral Props and the general steps and techniques you'll use to go about doing that. Now, in this case, we have a square peg from Gilbert Engineering, and you'll notice that this prop is not slit in half, meaning it's a solid prop. So typically, unless you live locally to a vendor or you're going to spend more money on shipping to not have it cut in half, most of the time your props are actually going to be cut in half and they may or may not, depending on the vendor and the specific model prop, include reinforcing backer plates. Now backer plates are nothing more than extra pieces of coral that are designed around the hole patterns. They'll fit on the back side and they act as doublers to reinforce the areas that were slit. Now in the case of the square peg, there are different mounts depending on whether or not the prop is slit in half or not. So in this case, because we have a solid prop, we're using mounts that are designed for the solid prop. So start, we'll flip this over. Now the first thing you'll notice here is that we're starting with a prop without pixels. So in the perfect world, this is your ideal situation. You want to put the mounts on before you put the pixels in. But if you're retrofitting an existing prop or a prop that you've already put, pushed pixels in, that can be done. The only thing is you have to remove the pixels only where the mounts go. So in this case, the center mount goes here. So if this was full of pixels, you'd only have to remove the mounts here where the center mount goes and where all the side mounts go, which in this case is only a handful of pixels. So it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but it just depends on the given prop. But in your perfect world, you do want to start and push, um, install the mounts before you um, install any of the pixels. In most cases, our mounts are installed to the prop with zip ties. You can use a standard zip tie, and this will insert from the back of the prop through the front and back over and you'll connect it. Now, whenever possible, we try and match zip tie locations if the prop were to have them. And in this case, a square peg does have zip tie locations here in the center, which our mounts are designed to line up to. But that doesn't work all the time. In fact, there's probably greater than half the props out there do not have zip tie holes that are either usable or at all. So you are going to have to make your own holes in the prop. And we'll show you how to do that later on in this video. In this case on the square peg, we're a little lucky because the center ones are done and the side ones we are partially done with a couple that we can utilize. Before we get started here, I want to talk about the center junction where we're connecting perpendicular pieces of conduit. The way we do that is with these PVC cross fittings that you can pick up from Home Depot or Lowe's. And on half inch PVC and half inch EMT mounts, you'll use a half inch PVC fitting. On three quarter inch EMT mounts, you'll use a three quarter inch EMT fitting. Now what you'll notice here is that if I take a piece, in this case three quarters, and we put it in, it's quite loose. So you need something here to make this more secure, which is why we include these bushings. The green bushings go onto the three quarter inch cross and the blue bushings go onto the half inch cross. Now, while you can press fit these in place, I do recommend gluing these in place. So whether you're using some epoxy, or in this case, I used pre to this one, and I used an adhesive called 3M5200. It's a marine adhesive. I just happen to have it lying around from other projects, and it worked great for this. But really, any adhesive will work here, and you're just trying to push this in and have it glued in so it can't work its way out over time. That's really the only purpose. But really, all you'll do is push that in, add some adhesive, and you'll be good to go. One potential issue you may encounter, and just something to be aware of, is depending on the home center that you pick up your PVC fittings, it's possible that your conduit may not freely slide all the way through. In this case, this three-quarter inch EMT slides very easily through this way with lots of extra room, but going this way, there's a little ridge in the center, it's just catching on. Now I could force it or sand this out, but in this case, it's not really a problem because you can't have both sections go all the way through. So as long as this conduit basically gets almost to the center or where it will hit the other conduit, in this case, you can see here, this conduit is coming through and it gets almost to the center before it is stopped. So in this case, this is acceptable as long as we make certain that this side, this direction here, is the side that will not have conduit going all the way through. Now with respect to the conduit that does go all the way through the center of the prop, 
Ideally, the way you want to have this oriented is that this direction with the continuous length of conduit should be perpendicular to the slit. So if this prop were slit in half this direction, we would want to run the conduit continuously across it so that'll give the prop the most strength. So to get started on installing the mounts on the square peg, we'll start here in the center and work our way out. I'll use these zip ties and as I previously said, this one is already pre-matched with all the zip tie hole locations. So all I have to do is just get this thing started. And sometimes it's easier just to pick this thing up. I'll get the zip tie through here, match it on the prop, flip it over, push the zip tie out the other side, and through. We'll slide that down. I won't tighten them down all the way. And that's one thing you definitely don't want to do is tighten things down before you get everything done. You want to make certain you want to make certain that you have all your mounts connected and get your conduit installed first before you tighten everything down. That way, if there needs to be a slight adjustment, that you'll be able to make that. And then once the conduit's in place, then you can tighten everything down. So we'll just get this here and go a little tighter. And we just work our way across. All right, we got all the zip ties in on the center. And just because these are a little long, I'm going to just trim these off just so I have a, they don't get in the way. But I'll still have that length there to allow me to pull these things tight. All right, those are all cut. Now we'll work on the outside mounts. Just move the prop here to get a better working angle on it. And I'll take this mount and we just want to set it over it and kind of line it up with the holes. And also, the in this case, we do have two locations for zip ties. And you kind of want to get the average centered location. Now there are some props out there like the Gilbert Engineering XLS Snowflakes and the Rosa Wreath that are not perfectly symmetrical designs. So rather than have a mount that can only fit on one location on the prop and we don't even know which location that is because it looks the same from many different angles, what we've done is we create a prop or a mount that averages out those whole locations. So you may find that it may not be exactly centered on the whole location, but in that case you should take the average fit and find the best overall average fit and that's typically going to be your centered location. But those props, there are not too many of them and they will mention that on the product page if they're not going to be a perfect fit. So in this case, this one is a perfect fit. So we'll just line this up and I'll try and get it perfectly lined up and then I want to clamp it in place. So I'll move this over the edge here and clamp it in place. The reason I'm doing that is for these other holes here that I have to make. And now there are a couple ways that you can make the holes. Now you could take a drill and use this here as a template and drill down. But the problem with the drill is sometimes it'll catch the flutes in the uh, coro and that can have a tendency for it to drift off center. So the preferred method is actually to burn the hole through. Now you could use the tip of an old soldering iron, but the way I like to do it is with a piece of eighth inch music wire, steel rod from Home Depot and a torch. So in this case, I'll just take the torch, have it on here and just heat this up. When I'm first heating it up, maybe 20 seconds or so, and then once it's warm, it only needs maybe 10 seconds or so. You should be able to get several holes out of it before you need to reheat it. So that should be good here. And I'll just take this straight down, use the mount as a guide, push through, push through. Maybe get one more before it cools off. So as you can see, super easy. Just making the holes. Just 
just reheat as necessary. Get a couple more here and this one will be done. So that's done. We'll get this one zip tied up, go through, burn the other holes, get them done, and we'll connect the conduit. Now that we have the mounts all zip tied to the coral, they're still a little bit loose to allow some fine tune adjustment once we get the EMT inserted. We'll start with the EMT. We have three sections. We have one longer section and two shorter equal length sections here. Now as a recap, this longer section will run perpendicular to the slit. So if our prop were slit in half for shipping right here, we would have this perpendicular to it with the two shorter sections being parallel to the slit. And for the center junction, we have our PVC cross with the bushings already glued in place. And the final consideration is going to be the length of the EMT. Now at a minimum, we want the EMT to run about a quarter to a half inch beyond the outside mount. But I say as a minimum because your circumstance may vary. In fact, I have several cases in my display where I'm running my EMT six inches to a foot beyond the edge of the prop because that just gives me better access to my mounting brackets. So whatever you're using, whether it's mounting brackets, uh, printed ones or conduit hangers, whatever you're doing, there may be a circumstance where you need the EMT to run beyond the edge of the prop. In my case, it's because there's a window in one of the locations and I just don't have a place to secure the mount over a window. So you may have to run the conduit at different lengths, just depends on your circumstance. Now, before we get started, I will mention this is the time where you typically would push the pixels before you put the conduit in. But I do think there is some benefit to putting the conduit in first, pre-drilling, getting all your holes for the screws set, then pulling the EMT out, and then pushing your pixels. While it is an extra step, I do think it is a little easier to insert the EMT now before the pixels are in, pre-drill everything, get it ready to go, then pull the EMT out and start pushing your pixels. But if you want to skip that step and just push your pixels now and then insert the EMT once all the pixels are in, that's fine too. So whatever works for you, in this case we'll get started with inserting the EMT now. Get those pieces out of the way. To rotate this here to give myself a little more room and just start inserting this in. Now it should go fairly easily with just a little bit of wiggle back and forth if you need to. Don't forget the center cross here. We'll feed that in. A little bit of rocking back and forth. This should be all you need. Now if you do find it's a little tighter, just be patient with it. Just keep, um, keep working it in. Remember, these mounts may not be exactly aligned. That's why you kept them a little loose. Whatever you do, just don't get a hammer and start pounding the conduit through. That's a way to break the mounts. The mounts are strong, but they're not indestructible. And taking a hammer to it and pounding the EMT through, that's a way where you may end up breaking the mounts. So right now, I'm just going to eyeball this about a half inch on the back side there. And we're ready to start pre-drilling for the screws. Now the screws I like to use are sheet metal screws. This is a uh, half inch by number eight sheet metal screw. I find that the half inch number eight is best served with half inch conduit and a three quarter inch by number eight is best served for or best used on three quarter inch EMT conduit. And to pre-drill, I like using a 764 drill bit. So 764 drill bit works perfect for this number eight screw. Now to insert the screw, let's take the drill and be very careful here. The one thing you don't want to do is over tighten. If you go down too fast and over tighten, you could crack the mount. So you just want to be very careful here that you don't go too fast and don't over tighten and potentially even take those last few turns by hand so that you don't, um, you don't go too far. Once you get a feel, you kind of know uh, how to use the drill, what speed, but when you're just getting started, it might be best to do those last few turns on the screw by hand. Now we'll insert the side pieces. Now 
the screws are all tightened, everything's really secure, and this is one really strong prop. The final step, now that everything is connected and solid, will be to tighten up all these zip ties, and then we can trim off the loose ends. Undo the screws, remove the conduit, push all the pixels, and then once the pixels are in place, return the conduit back in place, tighten the screws down, and we are good to go. So hopefully this video is helpful in showing you the techniques for attaching 3D printed mounts to coral props. If you have any questions, just leave us a message.